All right, we're back, and we're looking at uh, some rotations and mechanics. And uh, in particular, we're, we're taking a look at cases where your torque might be changing. Okay, it's a non-constant. And if that's the case, then you'd have a non-constant acceleration, a non-constant angular acceleration in particular. So often, uh, in classes, I'll, I'll make sure to tell people that uh, energy is a really neat thing to use when you're dealing with non-constant forces or non-constant torques. And the reason for that is it's just a scalar. Um, at the very least, energy is a thing that we, we want to use pretty much regardless when it comes to talking about and, and trying to find speeds. So here's just kind of a you know typical sort of rotations problem. Uh, a stick or something's on a hinge, it's able to rotate back and forth and it's just going to fall. So in terms of forces and, and what's causing the torque, it's going to be the, the gravity acting on this stick. Okay. So as, as long as uh, it's at an angle, there, there's going to be torque. So if our angle is measured from the vertical line, okay, so this would be our theta right here, um, we know how to find torque. Torque is technically R cross F. It, it's a position vector crossed with a force vector. So in terms of the magnitude, we make use of F R sine theta. Okay, remember that the angle we're talking about is the angle between um, a position vector and the force vector. So in this case, the, the R is coming from the axis of rotation. Okay, it's down at the bottom uh, where, where the hinge is. Okay, and it's directed towards the location where the force is being applied. So that's our R vector. Uh, in this case, it, it would be half the length of the stick. Our force, of, of course, is gravity. So we have mg, and then we have times uh, half the length from the axis of rotation, and times the sine of that angle. So, yeah, we can find torque, and we see that it, it is a function of the angle. And so if it tips over and if it's rotating, the angle's changing, therefore your torque is changing. Um, and now your, your alpha, your angular acceleration, is defined as your, your net torque divided by the moment of inertia. Okay, so in this case, the moment of inertia a stick rotated around one of its ends is one-third ml squared. And so that too, we, we could go ahead and, you know, often a problem like this would say find the initial angular acceleration, or find the, the angular acceleration at a particular angle as it's moving and, and rotating. And we, we could do that, um, since we now know what the torque is. That's our numerator. We can plug in our uh, one third ml squared for the inertia. Uh, mass drops out. One of the L's is going to drop out, and so our our initial angular um, acceleration in this particular case is we've got the gravity there. The three comes up. We have sine theta. And in our denominator, we, we'd have what's left over, uh, 2L. Okay, so we get something like that. Okay, so that's just using our basic definitions and a little bit of algebra. Now, the, the trickier parts come in where, let's say, we want to find, maybe they ask, um, what's the angular velocity? Uh, just before it hits the ground, okay, when, when it goes horizontal. Okay, now, if we, if we did Newton's laws to figure that out, uh, it would be a calculus problem. Um, because of the fact that we have a non-constant acceleration, you know, we have no choice but to use calculus. But let's take a look and, and see what happens if we use energy. So, uh, if, if the thing started off at rest, if we're just holding it at some initial angle, 
um, it has potential energy. Okay, and when it, it uh, is released, and it's just about to hit the ground when it when it goes horizontal, the potential energy would be zero at that point, and so all of your energy would, would be in the form of that rotational kinetic energy, one half pi omega squared. We're looking for omega right there. Okay, so we, we already know what the inertia is. So you can plug in the one third ml squared. Uh, now on the left hand side, we have to figure out what the height is. Um, when, when you're dealing with real objects, so-called rigid bodies like this, in rotations problems, um, heights, okay, when we define the potential energy, we have to use the location of the center of mass. So in this case, our initial height would be this in red, where, where the, um, how high is the, in the center of mass of the object above the ground. Uh, so we can get that. We can we can make a little triangle here. Okay, and we're trying to get the vertical side. Um, it's looking like, since we know the the hypotenuse of this triangle is is half the length of the stick, uh, the height. Let's go back down here. Is is going to be um, L over two. Uh, times the cosine of that angle. Okay, that's going to give this this horizontal side of the triangle. Okay, so when when you do that, then we can go ahead and we can solve for omega. Uh, let's see, this factor of half is going to drop out in this case. The mass is going to drop out on the two sides. One of the L's is going to drop out. And so it's looking like omega squared is uh, we're going to be left with the gra gravitational acceleration. We have the cosine of that initial angle, okay, with, at least relative to the a vertical line. And we're, we have to multiply by factor of 3 and divide by L. And so then we'd, we'd have our, our angular velocity uh, just before it hits the ground. So yeah, we can find angular accelerations uh, at any angle because we can find torques. We can find angular velocities making use of uh, energy conservation. And in this case, we have, we're, we're basically trying to avoid doing the calculus. <laughs> So these, these are typical sorts of rotations problems um, when you have these non-constant accelerations due to changing torques. Uh, I hope it makes some sense. I hope it helps. And until next time, we'll see you later.